Hello everybody, welcome to Windows 95. Let's write some wallpaper manager things. And in this video, I thought uh, that we would make a prompt uh, for the delete function. We will use it now at least. Uh, because I would like to, to prompt here uh, if we really want to delete the, the wallpaper before we do so. Uh, and I don't know if you know, but you can uh, set the I option to RM and that will actually prompt you when, when, when you want to delete something. But um, even if we use this, uh, we will get the prompt if we want to delete. If we answer no, it will not delete it, but then it will still do the said stuff and things here. So I, I would like to write my own little prompt script here. And that, that can also be good to have in, in, in the future, so to speak. So I have prepared a script here, YNP. Uh, doesn't do anything now, but I moved it to its own script here so we can test things out. Out stuff. Echo out stuff and then we do ynp pass all command line arguments. So now we can execute ynp here and it prints out stuff. And I've already written a little synopsis on how I would like this to work. And my inspiration is uh, pacman syu. I, I like the pacman prompt. Oops, need to be sudo. Um, and the Pac-Man prompt looks like something like this. Uh, we could copy it here for reference. Don't update anything. And yeah, you know it's a very simple prompt, but it's uh, it actually have all information we need here for a yes no prompt. That's why I call this YNP here. So I want it to work like this. When we execute the YNP function, let's say in the delete wall here, we add that first here. And then we should be able to just do YNP uh, and yeah, to yeah, whatever. It will return false if we se if we select no and it should return true if we select yes. Uh, and it will wait till it gets either no or yes. Um, a default option can be overridden with uh, command line options or options to the function here. So dash y will set yes to, to the default and no, yeah, to no. I know it's 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 weird now, default, 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 but, but that's uh, whatever. And then we have this prompt string here because this is uh, the, the Pac-Man prompt here. You can see there's a capitalized y here. That means that y is the default uh, option here which means that we can either press Y or just enter and it will select the default. <clears throat> but if we specify N here, then we can change the default. So we have a capitalized N first and then a lowercase Y. And if we press enter, then no will be sent here. So that's how I would like it to work. Let's make it work. Um, Let's first create a string with a prompt, sp string prompt, which is equal to all argument and this uh, y, y, n thing here. Let's just make it simple like this first. Then I would like to, to echo this out to standard error and I will copy it here because I always forget how to redirect a standard error otherwise uh, but you write it like this but then we don't we echo sp here let's also make sp local um, and then we want to read uh, input here and reading input is best done with the command read, which will read stuff from standard input by default, but you can also specify to read from a file and things like that. But now we standard in is perfect. And uh, by if nothing weird has happened, standard in is the terminal. I guess we should make a test here now that I think about it to make sure that standard input is really uh, from, from a terminal. Um, Let's see if we can do that because we've done something similar before. Um, 
I think it is T, let's see, no, standard in is zero, question mark, and it's a terminal. Or let's do a notify send instead. YNP invalid number of op options. Ah, I didn't specify any command line options here. I don't know if that's the. Hmm. Remember, we did this in some. Was it? Let's go to YouTube. I think we did it in this snap thing that we did, you know, or how to fail here, maybe. Yes, ah, okay, it's just T, well, wasn't that what I did? T2, T0. Ah, no, 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 it's the, it's the notify send that gets messed up, I think we need to do this. Yeah, it's a term. Um, and let's see if we can execute this from, from i3 just to see that this is working. Because I think um, zero, the zero file descriptor zero is standard in. Let's just make a, a quick binding here. Uh, w. Uh, Shift mm, Y execute Y and P. I think this is how you do it, right? So super shift Y. It's a term, didn't work. I guess I should have prepared this a bit. Super shift Y, it's a term. I guess we can use two then. Also, where did this come from? Ah, it's because we loaded i3 and the window rules triggers every time because uh, i3 is a weird program in a way. Wish there was like a BWM also, you know. It's a term, but the key binding doesn't print that. Okay, so let, let's use this. Sorry, that was really uh, sidetracking. Um, uh, to the max there, but whatever. I think it's kind of important. Let's let's comment this out because now we're testing in the terminal here. So read R S N one. What this does is uh, the R option, I don't remember, but it's always, it, it will complain if I don't use it and shell check say, yeah, use the R, otherwise you're, you don't understand. S is for silent, it means that it will not print uh, um, uh, any characters we print here, and N is the number of characters we, we are trying to capture here. We only need Y or N, one character is enough here. Then it will store uh, that character in, in a built-in variable called replies, we could test this by u pressed or reply I press L, u pressed L I press O, u pressed O I press enter, u pressed nothing uh, yeah, so it seems to be working. Um, so now we just add some logic here and, and yeah, we get back to this T2 thing. Um, I like to store this reply 
in, in, in a variable. You will see soon why. Let's call it key and then store reply here. We can make key local as well. And then um, we could uh, do if key is equal to n then return one phi and then let's remove this now so now we can at least test if it's false and then then we should be able to do this this is where I want to get to so we can write test prompt uh, and echo success there, test prompt, yes or no, I press Y, it says success. Test prompt, I press P, it says success. I press N, it doesn't say success, and that's the, this is important. Um, but uh, if, we, if we don't press Y, if we press like P or something, then, then we... we we don't want to exit out of the function here. We we want to loop this and do it again. So we create a, a, a loop here, looping forever and ever. Um, we don't break out of this loop till till we press uh, Y. We could. Break. Done. So now it will kind of work here for us. I press R, nothing happens. E, nothing happens. Enter, nothing happens. Y, success. Um, okay, we're getting somewhere. Um, Kind of have this part uh, done here, but the default here to be able to press the enter key that is um, the same as uh, uh, if enter is pressed, then reply will be blank. And that means we can set it to a default here. If it is blank, then we could set it to like n, for example, and then then it it, it would kind of work. Well, let's store the default in a variable. Let's define it here, default or declare it here. Default is equal to yes, we can have yes as the default. Uh, and then we don't set it to n here, we set it to default. And this is why I store the reply in, in, a, in a variable. And we could also do this because if we have caps lock or something or, or, or write a capital N or Y then it will not work but when we add these two commas here that will translate this key into lowercase so now it will work with both uppercase and lowercase Y and N so now we should be able to press enter also as a success so I'm pressing P, nothing happened, O, pressing enter success, great Mm, also would like to, to be able to override this uh, default with a command line option so so we can either use uh, dash y or dash n to modify this override this default we could use get dots but, but we could also use um, this dirt hack or you know what we, we, we also store we create a variable called opts and opts is equal to yes or no, y, n. Uh, and then we make a test here. If dollar $1 uh, is uh, yes, then that option is set. And then we could make one for dash n and so on. But why not uh, be a little bit fancy here and create a regular expression, dash. And then either 
uh, y or n, which could be written like this. But we could even use our opts variable here. Uh, this will also work. Uh, and if this is true, then the first argument is uh, either dash y or dash n. And when that happens, and when I store this in, in a group like this, that, that will, uh, then we can use that in, in um, like this. Setting default is equal to bash rematch one, because this is the first group within this par uh, parenthesis here. And then we also shift to remove uh, the option from, from uh, the argument list, so we get a nice uh, prompt string here. So now, uh, if we test this uh, with an option here, ynp, and let's set n as the default now. Uh, I press enter, then no success because now n was the default so that changes what enter will, will return kind of but now we get a, the wrong the wrong thing here uh, so, and what we want to do is this the first character here should be uh, the default and we want to make it uppercase and the second one should be the one that's not default uh, and that is opts here but we remove if we remove default from this opt variable opts variable we should have the other option and we can write that like opts replace default with nothing now we should get the, the correct option string here with uh, the n option set now it says capital N slash Y, I press enter, it works. Um, and I wonder if this is not all we need here. But let's let's make it work here also if 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 this uh, if we would try to execute this Y and P uh, when we don't have access to a to a terminal, then we don't test for anything, then we just set key to the default immediately and don't do this. Um, but that kind of changes stuff here. Um, I guess we need to move this, or maybe we can rewrite this a bit. Uh, what we do, we add this test again, or something similar to this, in this loop. But now we're not, not comparing $1, we're comparing uh, key with the options. We, and we also don't want the parentheses and, and that dash there. So if, if the key pressed is either uh, Y or N, then we got what we want. And, it's, and even if, it, if we press enter, then key will, will be Y or N here. But if that's not true, or continue, meaning continue with the loop, else break, done. Uh, and then remove this part here, add it here instead. But um, we could also make this a bit nicer, I guess. to uh, see if if key is n then we can set a variable called status is equal to one let's define that as a local as well status and remove this and then we re return status default to zero which is good um, and then we only do this while thing 
if um, if we are actually reading from a terminal here what we actually test if, if we are printing standard error to a terminal I thought it would work with zero here but apparently it didn't but this should be just as fine uh, or I shouldn't put it here we should also add this part to that so let's let's put this within an if instead then Now it will work even if we are not executing it from a, a, a terminal, but then we will actually not get the prompt at all. It will just set it to the default here. But that's, I guess, better. Otherwise, it will would kind of freeze the script for us. It's it's very annoying when you do when that happens. So that's I think this is worth it. Now we have this good little function here that is completely independent of, of the BWP script. Uh, but we will uh, import it to the B BWP script by just adding it to, to the lib directory here. Um, and we can use it in, in future scripts as well. So let's just copy this. Create a new file here called ynp.sh. Paste this stuff here. Then we get, go to delete wall. Um, and then we test here because I only want to display this prompt uh, if um, the D option is set for deleting. I don't want to have a prompt if we encounter this thing, you know, when we try to uh, select a, a wall that doesn't exist in the library, then we automatically delete that because, yeah, we clean it up, then we always want to delete. So I don't want to display the prompt there. So if uh, the option is set uh, and if um, the force flag is, is not set then or let's do this instead and ynp delete also let's set the default option here let's set it to no delete trg question mark or exit the script uh, deletion aborted whatever Right, now I think we got our prompt here. So let's try this. Uh, let's try to delete uh, let's try to delete the current one and see what happens. BWP D win 95. Delete Windows 95, default is no. Let's press yes or let's press O. Oh, nothing happens. Let's press yes. Why? It deleted it. Um, I meant to press no. Uh, let's th try another one. Let's try waiver. Press enter. No. The De deletion aborted because that's the default. Let's test it with the force option. Should just delete it without the prompt now. And it works. Great. It's the details, you know. <laughs> Okay, so now that we got that, uh, I just really wanted to add that uh, it, it's, I don't often use uh, prompts and stuff like this, but when you're deleting files, it, 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 it is kind of good to make things like this. And when we have this little function, it's, it's so easy to, to add it in the future, we just add yeah, the, the, that little command there. Okay, also uh, a nice way to show off my, my incredible uh, bash skills <laughs> because this this is just all bashisms some people might uh, uh, have a hard time accepting this this script here but whatever 
now we are very close here. We need to add the, the get next uh, function. I think we have already added it to the option list and stuff here. Yes, and it's already present here. So all we need to do is add it, add a test for next in, in our get wall function here. Change this to get next wall. And we change this to testing for n. And it will look very similar to the get previous wall functions. Let's copy that and create a new file called get next wall. Paste. And then we just change some names here. We will rewrite this awk function, but it will be a two-liner, so don't worry. And if it does, if it finds a the wrong one, we use this. Um, okay, but there are some difference to get next and get previous. Uh, this is how I would like it to work. When right now we are here, you know. And if we go previous in the history, we go down down this list. And uh, when we go next in history, then we go up in the list. But if we are at the top, then I would like to take a random wallpaper instead. Um, so get next wall. So what we want to do is first test if we are at the top of the of the script or of the history. So let's store the first line of the history in a local variable called first line. Head dash one history file. And then we test if um, the first line is the same as the current wallpaper if first line is equal to kernam then get random wall else do this stuff and yes I know it's a bit messy with all these else ifs but whatever uh, else we do this and what we are doing we want to print the, the next uh, and or the, the previous entry in, in the history so all we need to do is store each line and when we find a match to the current then we print the last line so to speak so and we know that we never will be at the first so 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 this should always work as long as there are at least two entries in in the or it should always work actually if it's not empty but whatever um, so we store the current line in a variable called last line or something inside awker is equal to dollar zero but before we do so we test if the current line is equal to the current wall which is a variable we have here in the awk loop containing current num if that is true print last line uh, and exit out of awk here I think this this is mo more or less enough here um, if um, we don't find if this is empty that means it's broken you know because we get get here uh, if the file doesn't exist then we delete it try to get a new one and so on so and and this could happen uh, so many times that that we will return an empty uh, empty uh, uh, target here and then we exit out with history is empty but maybe we should also um, Maybe we should uh, 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 delete the history file. That will save us some time next time if it's um, uh, if we do that. So rm history, and also if the history file doesn't exist, then we echo the current wallpaper. I guess when we go next here, 
it almost makes more sense to since we that's what we do here if we are at the top of the list maybe that's also what we do if the history file doesn't exist we get random so let's try this now bwp set wall previous now we are here now it should take somar briga this one if everything is working it works and next we should get the yeah, go back do it again we should get a random but now we can see we got a new uh, problem here it selected a random wallpaper but it didn't add this to the history because in set wall we have a rule here if uh, the p or n option is set then then we don't add anything to the history because we don't want to modify the history when we are navigating it but we kind of want to do that when we take a random wall which could happen with the n option set and we could add like a complicated test here but it's almost almost better to do it in the get random in one way in one way mm, not Hmm. Maybe we should add it here. It's it's safer. It will be a bit a little bit uglier. Don't know if we can do this. If this is not true, or the test we want to do is this. No, we, we don't really, it's hard to do the test here. We, we kind of have to do it in, in the random wall here. Um, here we can test if the next option is set and we are in the get random wall then then we we do want to to update the history We will add in the next video some, some tests to this also. Improve the random function. I, I figured out a couple of things I would like to add here. And also test that, that we have any uh, images at all in, in the library. Because uh, that could happen. And maybe default to current wallpaper here. So, so we are sure we, we add something here. Or we could actually do it here. Now it should work. Uh, yes, we should take a random here. Look at the history. We are at sunny leaves. Let's go previous. Get the polygon sunrise. Next, sunny leaves. Next again, a random. And it added that to, to the history. We can take ne next again. It's a random. We can go previous. So now it kind of works. And now our module here also kind of works, I think. Now we can navigate the history here, white mountains, table cat, and as you can see the arrow disappeared because it, this module understands this uh, if we are at the top of the list and stuff. We can take a random, it modifies this, we can even delete, if we delete the current here, deleted that, went back. So everything works now except uh, this rename uh, icon here. So I guess that's what's left here and, and some... some uh, some improvements just uh, overall improvements so, so let's say one more video bwp then then we create this polybar module thank you for watching everybody have a great day bye